Yes, sir. So this talks today, how did it go? What happened? Well, we have agreed to, at the, at the end of the day, they have agreed to set up a committee to look into that law, the retroactive law. So when they set up that committee, they will look into how best it can fit in in the new draft constitution. That's what, that's purposely why we are here today. So that we'll be waiting for the report of that that committee, and then we'll see what best is going to go ahead. But, but the reports we are getting is that these talks are on the brink of failing. Is this really the case? Well, I cannot say for sure it will fail because until we see the final report of the, the committee that is going to be set, there's a new committee they are setting up to look at that particular clause, whether, how are they going to do it to send it to a referendum? That's what we are now waiting. If it comes back, we are going to look at it, look at the whole, the whole draft and see whether what we have agreed on has been captured, including that clause. How about the issue of President Barrow and UDP leader Usain Davo meeting. This was something that was suggested yesterday. Is your party aware of that? No. In fact, yesterday we were absent. I'm not even aware of that. Yesterday we were not here. But I think maybe they will be, They must have met and they'll come out on, to, on, on, on a common ground or otherwise. Honorable, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank so you. I think I've also seen the leader of the Gambia Democratic Congress, oh, do you Honorable, me, my Honorable, you Honorable me, my Mama, Mama Kande. <laughs> Honorable, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Honorable, so the talks today, what really happened? Well, not much happened. I mean, I think um, we have met here for the the head of the International Idea Organization was briefing us of the previous meetings that they had last night. And um, yeah, that was it. The former president has gone back to Nigeria, and um, I think we are still giving it a two or three weeks' time to see uh, what team, what uh, type of team that are going to be set up to look at the issues technically, because this is a very you know critical situation that we are in right now. So this committee that you want to set up, what exactly will it do? I, I don't want to set up a committee, but maybe the international idea want to set up a committee to look at the retroactivity uh, of this constitution and to see uh, the way forward. We are just trying to look around of how to uh, get ourselves to the referendum before uh, before um, mid, mid of this year. So I think um, the legal advisors maybe would be in a better position to look at the technical issues in it and, and advise us at the end of the day. And the reports we got is that yesterday it was you who suggested, made a proposal for yeah. President Adam Barrow and UDP leader Usain Odabo to meet. Why did you make that suggestion? Yes, because uh, the, these are the two groups that are holding us for now because all the other political parties don't have any issue or any problem um, of uh, you know um, supporting the draft constitution. But because of this retroactive uh, section in the constitution, I mean, these are the two people or the two groups that are holding us. And I think they need to sit them down and then one of them have to sacrifice for the nation. At the end of the day, it's not about a particular group or a particular individual. This is a national issue and uh, we should all put the Gambia before anything else. So it is not a form of blaming anybody, but still we are, par we are in the process of negotiating. So I see no reason or no problem that these two cannot, be sit, together, cannot sit together and negotiate among themselves with a media to, to find a lasting solution for our problems. Now, between these two political avatars, who do you think, in your opinion, should, as they, you call it, sacrifice? They, they, for they, they both can sacrifice something for this nation. Honorable, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'll now also speak to the leader of the uh, People's Progressive Party, the newly elected like leader, um, Honorable uh, Keva uh, Jalo. Yeah. Honorable Jalo, thank you very much. Uh, you also attended the talks today. Yes. As a and stakeholder, yes. one of the political parties in the country. Yes. From a PPP point of view, uh -huh. what can you tell us in terms of how these talks have, have been going all this while? Actually, unfortunately, it should not have been dragged to this level. This will have been solved some or since December, but you know uh, when it involves uh, political parties taking taking sides, it's difficult to bring us all on board at one time. Now the good news is from Nigeria where they went to Abuja, they have trashed out almost all the remaining issues except the retroactive uh, po uh, 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 position. Now we should not lose sight of the fact that there were serious issues that were omitted and they were contentious. But because of the Nigeria, the Abuja meeting, all those issues are solved. Now we only left with the retroactive uh, uh, situation. Um, that is a very serious issue. It, it, unfortunately, it dragged down to um, one, one to one, um, UDP and uh, President Barrow. 
Now, unfortunately, um, we are still working on it. And for me and for PPP, we never lose hope. Uh, we have been in this, uh, our party has been in this situation since independence, negotiating, negotiating until we reach a common platform. That is why from PPP point of view, we are optimistic that something will happen. However, it will happen in the sense, because they have just suggested that uh, we will, uh, there is going to be a technical committee and within three weeks time they will come back. Hopefully within the three weeks, uh, um, reason will prevail and they will move forward. Because this is no win-win to anybody. I mean, if you hold the country at ransom, I don't want to blame a person. I blame the whole entire country for whatever should happen. But if we go to a referendum, hopefully that will solve the situation. Now, now, now uh, at the level of the PPP, your position is for the refractive to close to be knocked out. Yes. Why did PPP take that position? Because you cannot apply a law today and then you cannot uh, uh, enact a law today to apply for five years ago. I mean, a law for us, what we believe in, a law is a law for today. If you want to retroactive it, I mean, you are, it's like witch hunting. That's what we want to, we're trying to avoid. A law that is passed today should start today. But then if you say for five years, uh, five years ago, who knows who you are, you are, you are trying to hunt? And that's, the, well, that's what we want to avoid. That law should start today and we move on. For us, it doesn't bother much at all in the sense we, will, we, so, we support the non-inclusion of the retroactive law. That's what we support. Because of the fact that a law starts today. What about if I was in the state house at the time? It means I, I'll be affected. If, what about if there was another party who was there? He would have aggrieved at the time. So I don't think it makes sense. That's what I think. That's what now, the party thinks. Now, this thing is happening. You are attending these meetings. meetings yes. yes, these talks. While there is fire in your house. Your party, you have now a parallel executive. No, no, no. And no, you no, have no, somebody no, who no, self-declared himself no. as leader of your Self, party. I, I like that. Yes. I like that yes. person. What can you tell us about no, no, that? I like that. One party, to, <laughs> apparently seemingly no, no. two leaders. I like you already yes. solved the problem. Yes. Self-declared yes. is different from I was elected by the Congress. And... For somebody self declare is a different thing altogether. Uh, Fantolo Manso, I don't know how you call it in, 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 in Mandinka. Fantolo Manso and Mola Manso Bankilia. I was elected by the Congress. And she declared, she self declared. That's a different thing. That has solved the problem anyway. So that cannot hold water. People will recognize that. We recognize the institution, not the individual. So that's not a problem for us. She, will, she may go with the title self declared chairman or secretary, that's fine. But for me, I'm elected as the Secretary General and Party of PPP. That's it. That's solved the problem. Thank you very much, Honorable. That's uh, <laughs> Honorable Keva Jalo, the leader of the People's uh, Progressive Party. And I think I've also seen uh, Mr. Kandora, who is uh, uh, an official of Gambia Action Party. I think he, he admin, the administrative secretary of Gambia Action Party. Right. Mr. Kandora, good afternoon. Good Tell afternoon. us, uh, in terms of the Gambia Action Party, mm -hmm. what have you been bringing to the table at these talks? Yeah, um, the whole issue for Gambia Action Party, we have no problem with that. The retroactivity clause, with or without it, we are still good to go, because we 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 want to uh, give chance to entire Gambia or the Gambians to have a new constitution. Because uh, all along we've been operating on 1997 constitution, it is not bad, that is right. But we want to give them more chance. So in terms of this discussion, you know, we don't have any issue with that. So we are urging all other parties or the two factions who are a stumble, uh, stumbling block for these um, uh, whole issues, dragging us here and there. You know, Gambians didn't deserve that. You know, at the end of the day, um, it is disturbing the entire nation per se. So the Gambia Action Party's position in this whole issue, we agree in all other areas. So no problem with that. Thank you very much, Mr. Kandor. So that's the Admin Secretary of Gambia Action Party. So this meeting has ended uh, here, or these talks, if you like, has have, have, have ended uh, have ended here at uh, uh, the African Princess. So we'll try to see, because almost all the political parties, uh, 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 representatives, leaders, either leaders or their uh, representatives were here for these talks here at the African Princess. Yesterday they were at um, uh, the uh, they were actually at the Sadaura Kervajara Conference uh, Center where they, 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 they discussed on this issue. So today too they returned. And I have seen the representative of 
uh, the president's National People's Party, Honorable Sidi Njai, who he also has been here. So we'll talk to him and really speak to him. I also see the leader of Ghana, he's also here. Uh, we'll also try to see if we can talk to him. Honorable uh, Njai, thank you very much. Uh, these talks, the NPP has been the most important, if you like, player in this. This has been about your party, or also about the UDP. At the level of your party, what have you been trying to gain or achieve at these talks? Yeah, um, thank you very much, Don Bai. Um, I want to thank you sincerely. Um, let me just set the record straight. It's not about NPP or UDP, but this is about the nation, about the country. Now, uh, His Excellency President Adam Abaro uh, constituted uh, under the di uh, supervision and guidance of 10 foreign ministers as President Usain Udab and others. They constituted a commission uh, of CRC to draft a constitution that will represent the values, the views and aspirations of the Gambian people. Now, when they draft, first draft came out. The objective was for Gambians to look at the draft and input uh, uh, as per if there are any agreement or there are any thing that might cause rift or dispute among the Gambian people. Because President Adam Abaro indicated to them and to every Gambian, let's build a constitution that will be the product of each and every Gambian a document that will be that will stand the test of time a document that will be owned by everybody on a broader consensus especially political majority of the issues that were highlighted are all political issues and of course we have religious issues so the members of the christian council and the gambia Supreme Islamic council also made some issues Various groups, including the executive cabinet, individuals, civil society organizations, and political parties, forwarded their concerns as an addendum to previous consultation with the Constitutional Review Commission. However, for one reason or the other, most of these major issues that are, of course, sticking point for now, we are never captured into the final draft by the Constitutional Review Commission. The bills die upon arrival at the National Assembly, mainly on key issues. They highlighted the issue of the Secretary General creating a parallel president in the State House. They highlighted the issue of the Inspector General of Police, who is an executive member, is a member of the executive arm of government. And that, as a president, you cannot give instruction to direct the Inspector General of Police as per the duties and responsibilities assigned to you as the chief executive of officer, you delegated some of your responsibilities to these people, including the Inspector of Police. Many Gambians say these are a problem. We've also looked at, in fact, some people in the local languages indicated that I'm not Jan, you bury in Lomosibir constitution. For example, and the highest of elected office in the Gambia that's the office of the president. It's defy logic for one to suggest that, or for one to say that, to impeach an elected president of a country, you needed only 50% for him to be removed. But to remove a chief justice or a judge in a country, you need 75%. So these things, people could not fathom and understand the reason why. We have also other issues. The issue of budgeting, of course, the independent institutions, the judiciary, for example. But, but, but don't, don't you think, let me cut you in there, sorry. Don't you think, can you just hit the nail on the tail, uh, uh, on the head? This has to do with the president's current term. That is what really yeah, led yeah, to yeah, the yeah, failure yeah, yeah, of this draft, draft constitution. Yeah, 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 do you yeah. think so? No, no, I want to come in there. Yes. You know, the reason why we had these negotiations, not only the retroactive, all these clauses, I'm just trying to give a synopsis to just to dissect a little bit for people to understand. It's not about President Adam Abaro, it's about the national interest. What is the national interest? Yeah, these are some of the issues that I'm highlighting here. Now that, when that happened, another clause, which is the retroactivity of the current term of the president. Now, for us as the members of the National People's Party, we're able to dialogue 
and through and with, of course, President Jonathan and uh, International Idea and all the political parties, every political party in the Gambia accepted some of these recommendations and also they come up with their recommendations and all the political parties in the country accepted in the interest of the nation, including the retroactive clause. Not only the NPP, but the NPP and all the other political parties thought that it is targeting an individual. So therefore, it must not be in the Constitution, and we all indicated that it should be expunged. Only the United Democratic Party that refused. Now, there is now, that now, yes. There's also uh, the, another school of thought that the United Democratic Party is holding on retroactive clause as a scapegoat. But what is certain is that they are not interested in the 50% plus one votes. Because they think when there is, for example, a second round of voting, no political party will back them. However, it but is these are mere speculation. These no, are the, these are the truth. It these are now, the truth. How did you know it this? Is now, How did you know this? It is now up to them. How did you know this? Yeah, because we, we are all here. We, 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 we live in this country and we, we, we know. So now we, we could not agree. Uh, in Abuja, we came, of course, there are a lot of progress we made since 2020. In December and January, President Jonathan's uh, arrival here, all the issues, progress have been made, but only on this. And Mr. Dabo is insisting it won't happen. Now, now let's talk about the issue of removing the president's current term. You dubbed it as national interest. Why did this happen to be an issue of national interest to expunge or exclude the president's current term? How is that national interest? Can you, see, you explain that? You see, yeah, because as you speak, um, majority of the political parties, they believe that that clause is targeting an individual. And they believe that it is not fair to have it. And they believe that in the interest of the nation, all the political parties indicated that in the interest of the nation, that clause should be expunged. That makes it a national issue. All the political parties, remember, Gambians, every Gambian is divided among these political parties. Therefore, majority of the Gambians have, of course, uh, 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 decided to make so that should be expunged from the, and then the United Democratic Party is holding us to ransom. Now, <laughs> holding us to ransom. But how about the issue of the president? And the UDP leader Usenu Dabo meeting, that are this suggestion or proposal for these two political avatars to, to really meet one to one and then, and then, and then talk. Yeah, I, 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 I think, um, uh, uh, um, let me just say this uh, President Barrow has shown absolute commitment to the process and negotiation with any Gambian. Um, but he's not coming to the negotiating table. Of course it's been coming, they've been coming. Uh, uh, that is the party. You know, our party, you know, President Adam Barrow believes in representations and he believes in democracy. That is why he's building an internal democracy within our party. Decisions are made by uh, the party's executive. And uh, we, it's not a one man uh, show. So President Adam Barrow have met, of course, uh, Jonathan this time, twice within 72 hours. He met him late last year and early this year. And then he, he of course, uh, 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 we've uh, uh, been equal to the task, both in Bandul here and in Abuja, with regards to that. And uh, we were able to, uh, of course, uh, discuss. And uh, all the political parties saw our point as genuine, as uh, that they would not want to be judged uh, uh, badly by uh, uh, history in, 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 of course, uh, in the future. Therefore, they decided to uh, align themselves with justice and with uh, uh, the interest of the nation. So, President Adam Barrow is, of course, committed to, to, to the cause. Uh, you know, it's fallacy and uh, uh, um, incomprehensible for one to suggest that he is uh, standing uh, on the path of a new constitution. Now, now, today's talks appeared or looked to be the final, final day for any talks to take place. Now that has gone, today also has eluded you. In terms of the future of whatever that is 
to come or not to come. Do you really think that I mean, this new path, because it would appear that you guys are pretty smart. You have used the, you, you've used the, the, the approach of political parties meeting that has failed. Now you want to uh, set up a committee, whatever that is. I don't, I don't even have an idea. I mean, it looks like I mean, everything is done now, done and dusted. This thing has clearly failed. Well, I think the mediator, of course, uh, His Excellency President Jonathan, would uh, and the organizers would definitely probably um, uh, get to get back to us and communicate to Gambian as to the next step. But uh, as they indicated, uh, not all hopes are lost, and uh, they would want to uh, explore other opportunities and avenues in which they think might lead us to getting um, a new constitution. Thank you very much, Sidinjai. Uh, and a member, a top member of the President's National People's Party. So that would be that. I think I've also seen the leader of the Citizens Alliance. He was uh, standing somewhere, but I think he has left. So uh, I think that will be that uh, for now. Uh, uh, I mean, the talks has ended or have ended here at the African Princess. The talks over the beleaguered draft constitution that has ended. The party leaders, all of them have left. And now, the, this was supposed to be the last day for these leaders to meet and then discuss. But still, this huge standoff persists. And what we are getting is that the new development is that now the people spearheading this, that's the international idea, the Minister of Justice, now the path that they want to take or the approach is they are going to set up a committee, a new committee. We have not been able to find out who are going to be members of this committee, but they want to set up a committee and the committee will do what actually they have been doing all, all this time. That is to look at the gray areas, to look at the issues that are contentious and find a way of bringing uh, a, a deal around it. So that is what has happened yesterday. They gathered, they met, where a proposal was made by the leader of uh, Gambia Democratic Congress, Mama Kande, for UDP leader Hussein Dawo and President Adam Barrow to meet one-to-one one one and find a way of uh, 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 getting or uh, eking out a common ground. So that is all. Uh, for now, it would appear that everything that has to do with this draft constitution talks have failed. Lavinjai, reporting for the Foreign Network News Review.